We're continuing on in this session covering more information about the launch modes. We have quantization and velocity next. Quantization is normally left at launch mode for global, which means it's going to match whatever we have up here. But you can set specific timing quantizations for each of these launch mode for a clip individually. So let's take clip 1 and 1B and we'll set their launch modes to always come in on the quarter note. And then we'll set beat 2 and beat 3. They're global, so we'll leave that there and change our global setting to 16th notes. So now we have two clips that will respond to the setting of the global and two main beats that will always come in on the next quarter note. So with any launching we do, we'll hear that now. Let's listen, playing back, launching, launching early, and still waiting for the quarter note. So we have some global setting and others that always come in like the main beat on the main quarter note as this sets. Velocity has to do with when you set a launch mode from a MIDI device that has velocity information, will it change the volume of that clip? So let's take beat 1B now and I'm triggering it from a keyboard. And let's stop. I'm going to tell it to listen to the velocity at about 50 percent. And I'll begin playback softly. Hit harder. Next time. Harder. Hard. Okay, so velocity goes up and down to control the volume of this playback. So you can use that to make some clips more subtle or strong at different points in the song when you trigger them from a keyboard, etc. Now we come down to follow actions, which is part of the whole idea of having all these four clips together in this demo. So I'm going to set this first clip to launch normally, and but after it plays for two bars, I want it to go to the next clip. And then it'll go immediately to the next clip. Then I'll choose beat two and tell it to go immediately after one bar down to the next. So let's put this again. I'm going to change that to beat two is two bars long, so I'll change that to play for two measures and then go down. Beat 1B again, play twice or for two measures. And then next, I'll tell it to go to the next one. And when it gets to beat 3, I'll tell it to play that for two measures and then go back to the top. So we'll play the first. Now let's start this. So this one will begin playback. Play twice. You can see the flashing one telling us which one's about to play, and yellow which one is playing. Again, plays for two measures. It comes down to beat three. And how it will follow is it'll go back up to the previous, and we can see that flashing. So I've created like an eight bar phrase with four different beats, so there's variation automatically. So let's break this down now. The follow action says for how many measures, beats, and subdivisions do you want this one to play once it's launched? Then once it's launched, what's going to happen next? Is it going to go stop? Is it going to play itself again? Is it going to go to the previous clip, the one right above it? The next clip, the one below it? The first one or the top one in a group? If there's a space, then it will not see it as a group. Or the last one in a group? And again, any spaces will break up that grouping. And then we can enter in a random factor here, any or some other action. So now notice we also have some secondary choices here. Play the next one or skip to the last one. So what if I said, you know, to factor out of one every fourth time, let's say I'll type four here, then come over here and type one. And what we're saying is every once in a while, go to the last one. So in beat two, sometimes it's going to go to beat one, but sometimes it'll go to the last one. So beat 1A is the one we've set this up for. So let's play. It's going to go to beat 2. We can tell by this. I'm going back to beat 1 manually. Again, it's ready to go to beat 2. Back up to beat 1. 
waiting for B2. So every once in a while, randomly, it will take a percentage and go down to the last one, which you just saw now. And back up. So what we're saying is, it has a 4 to 1 chance of going to the next one, or a 1 in 4 chance for going to the last one. So it's 4 times more likely to go to this one. So we actually have two follow actions for each clip if we want it. Now if you want a preset order to be followed all the time then you're going to set your follow actions to only be one and not activate the second one. So I'll come back up here disable this. So again we can create certain follow actions to stop a sequence to add in randomness or in the case now to create a preset pattern that always goes from beat 1A then down to beat 2 then it goes automatically back to beat 1B for that clip. And then finally it'll come down to beat 3. And then after it plays beat 3, it goes back up to the top. Okay, let's start these together. Now you can see that this creates quite a bit of flexibility and takes quite a time to explore, but really get in there and look at these. They're very helpful.